our family didn't have any photo albums prior uh, to World War II. My father was really concerned that he was going to be sent to a separate detention center, so he either burned or buried things that connected to us to Japan, including our photo albums. Manzanar, my first film, was kind of a catharsis. A lot of the shots in the film were places that I, I remember. I needed to get across the, what it was like to be a six-year-old, quote, American, the trauma of all your friends and neighbors calling you the enemy. In the shadow of the Hollywood industry, where people want to make feature-length films that are going to do fantastically well at the box office, and here was somebody who wanted to make documentaries about real people where the payoff was consciousness and some kind of political awareness. Life could be a dream, life could be a dream. Do, 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 life could be a dream. I decided to go to Art Center College of Design. I freelanced for a while and was relatively successful, but I realized I wanted some way to document my history, which is by extension, Japanese-American history, and even more so Asian-American history. I happened to run across an Asian-American newspaper called Ghidra, the Asian-American movement newspaper. I went down to the Ghidra office and uh, volunteered my services. At the same time, a program at UCLA Film and Television School called Ethnocommunications was created by the brand new uh, Asian American Studies Center. We wanted to reflect ourselves in a, in a very honest and natural way and decided to form a film production collective that was strictly dedicated to documenting the Asian American experience. Manzanar. What's it like? Kamasaki says it's in the desert. That's all I know. Bob's always been a filmmaker, but I think in his blood he's always been a teacher. He started teaching in San Diego and then came to UCLA. He really wanted to convey uh, his, his way of making movies and what he was making movies about to his students. He also was somebody who represented integrity. In 1996, Bob started the Center for Ethnocommunications here at UCLA, and he started pioneering the teaching of community media in the university. He started everything, when you think about it. Karen and I went on a uh, archival trip to Seattle. We first kind of discovered moving images, and that was the uh, Nakata collection kind of pushed us into the movie image archive. My mission, I think, is to use that material to tell our story. So I thought the museum was ideal. It would be an institution where we can archive material. And then I began to pitch the idea of a media art center. If Bob and Karen and, and others hadn't gone out and talked to women that worked on the uh, plantations or some of the early Nisei leaders, those stories would be lost. But then I think to incorporate them in a way that was very meaningful, whether it was through an exhibition or to create a standalone video piece, that was all a part of the work that the museum was very fortunate to be able to do. The notion of documenting, preserving, and presenting a community is that's what I kind of started out with. And I see it reflected here at the museum. <laughs>